I'm Don Hall. I'm Steve Anderson. We're the directors of Winnie the Pooh. And we'd like to take you through uh, the story process, their story development process here at Disney. It's really the same process that Walt and his team established very early on in the early days of the studio. Uh, it's a very collaborative process and it's a very visual process. Um, and we really wanted to embrace that on Winnie the Pooh and use that process to create this film. So we're going to take you through the steps of how we did that. Excellent. All right. So uh, the origins of uh, the film are very simple, um, much like the Pooh stories uh, on which they're based. Um, Bob Iger had a conversation with John Laster and said, take a look at Winnie the Pooh, if you wouldn't mind. John Laster had a conversation with us and said, take a look at Winnie the Pooh, if you wouldn't mind. So, uh, but there was a strong feeling um, to, to really return Wayne the Pooh to his roots. And, and to us, that meant two things. It was the Milne stories that, were, that the original Disney featurettes were based on, and then the Disney featurettes themselves in the 60s. So uh, the first thing we did was read, uh, read the books cover to cover. And Steve had, was a fan as a kid and had read the books. Uh, I was sort of new to it. And, and uh, I was completely blown away by how funny they were and how charming and witty and how it, they kind of worked on different levels. So uh, I think we were absolutely convinced that, that this was broad audience material here. Um, so once we picked out about six stories that we felt we, we could explore, uh, we got to work uh, drawing them out. And we uh, got Bernie Mattinson, who's been with the studio since 1953. Bernie's worked with uh, Walt Disney and, and the original Nine Old Men, um, and he's a bona fide Disney legend. So uh, we got him on board early on, and uh, we started drawing uh, beat boards based on these six stories. Uh, and um, Bernie became sort of our, our Pooh guru in a way. He was sort of the, the sounding board for all things Winnie the Pooh. And, and if Bernie, o Bernie felt good about it, then we felt good about it. Um, so one of the stories uh, Bernie did a beat board for was Eeyore losing his tail. And of course, we were pitching this to John Laster, and he was, he was very fond of them. And so much so that uh, at one, there was some fateful uh, meeting between top-level Disney executives here in the building. And uh, they broke for lunch. They had a little, little extra time for lunch. So... Uh, John called Bernie and said, Bernie, get up here with your board, uh, and had Bernie pitch uh, be Eeyore losing his tail to, to this uh, group of executives. And, of course, they fell in love with the pitch and said, hey, could you give us a feature? And so that's when we got to work. So we began to then try to weave the, all these stories together uh, into a cohesive thing. And one of the, the most important steps in that process was getting uh, these ideas in front of our story team. Getting everybody together in a room like this and start, we just started drawing. Any ideas that were sparked from the original Milne text, people just drew and drew and drew and we brainstormed, pinned them up on boards and we created so many countless boards like this where you can just see it's full of different ideas. Ideas that are in the film but in, presented in a much different way. For example, uh, you know, these two drawings are, have Tigger in a disguise being mistaken for a monster. I think this was even before we had the idea of him being mistaken for the Baxen. We just knew that'd be funny if somehow in the course of the story he got some crazy disguise on and everybody got afraid of him like he was a threat. Um, so you never know what ideas are going to spark you know, a great sequence on down the line. So you keep the room free, you keep it open, collaborative, and like I said before, visual. So then all these visual ideas then become the clay with, with which we then sculpt our story. And ultimately, we end up with boards like these. This is an even more detailed outline board uh, of the final film. And then this becomes the touchstone for the storyboarding process. Now that we move into actually doing continuity boards, everybody refers to this. We take this outline and we break it up into sequences, different sections. And each storyboard artist gets a few different sections. And this was the script that, with which they followed. We didn't actually write a screenplay. We had our outline. And if anybody needed to know where their piece fit into the puzzle, uh, the balance, the structure of the story, what comes before, what comes after, this is what they would refer to. This was really our, our Bible, if you will. And then storyboarding began. So this, this outline process is also our pitching tool to pitch to uh, John Laster. And he's able to tell through the pitch you know, if the overall story is working. And, and so once he feels good about it, then he gave us the go-ahead to start storyboarding continuity. Um, and it was actually a very easy process because the story crew had been with us from day one in the story room when all these crazy ideas were being thought of. 
And so, like Steve said, we didn't really have a screenplay. We just started storyboarding. And, and they wrote and storyboarded their own sequences. And it was very valuable that everybody had digested the Milne books as well. Uh, so they could kind of write in the voice of A.A. A. Milne. Uh, and so this process you know, goes on for a few months, and then we screen the movie, which means we, we film the story sketches, add temporary sound effects, temporary dialogue, temporary music, and screen it for an audience uh, in our theater downstairs of our colleagues and crew. And uh, then we get notes um, from everybody, the fe our fellow directors and John Lasser and the crew, and we put the movie back together and we start drawing again. And, and this, this, we screen about every three months during the course of a movie's life. And eventually sequences get pretty, uh, pretty solid, solid enough to then go into animation. And then animation replaces the story sketch. And then uh, two years later, we have a finished film. <laughs> Now, that you say this is a fairly typical process for, for Disney, that this is how they all work? Yeah, I, I, in varying degrees. I mean, I think, you know, we didn't, like Steve said, we didn't really have a finished screenplay. The, the screenplay was basically transcribing our storyboards, again, which is sort of a, an old school way to work. I think it, people do integrate screenplays into their process at various stages here. But essentially, we have this whole building full of amazing artists, and, and this is a visual medium. So uh, you really want to test everything out visually.